In this video, Tim Hastings, our lab tech and also a biology student alum from Keene State, is going to show you what is in um, what you need to have in your bench area in order to set up the 16S PCR. We have uh, two different uh, micro pipetters with two different volumes, along with uh, the corresponding tips. We also have several tubes of reagents for the PCR reaction. So on ice, we have uh, the primers, uh, 27F, 907R, and 1522R, as well as the TAC. And then at room temperature, we have the water and the DNA. Um, and then in this small rack here, we have the two tubes in which we will do the PCR reaction. Um, for now, we can ignore this tube. This will be a loading die for when we do the, uh, uh, when we run the gel. And here, Tim will show you, working with uh, Caitlin, a student in our lab, how to actually set up the PCR reactions. All right, so to begin with, uh, if you take uh, those two uh, small tubes in, in the small rack yet. Mm -hmm. I would label one of them one and label the other two. Just on the lid? Just on the lid. It would just kind of be there. And number one will be 1522R and number two will be 907. I just use one or two just in order to limit the amount of writing on that really, really small tube. Yeah. Hey, Caitlin, can you hold up the little tiny PCR tubes so that people can see how tiny they are? Like, pick one up and hold it up. Yep. So these are really tiny and also really easy to break, and they get staticky and stick to your gloves, so they oh. can be a little troublesome to work with. Thank you. Very good. So we're going to start adding the, uh, the uh, reagent for the PCR reaction itself. I always begin with the water, just because we, we don't have to switch tips in between. So take the uh, uh, the bipeder, the yellow one, and dial it down so it says 22. Alright, and then we're going to open these yellow, yellow box of tips. And we're going to we're gonna line it up and put it on by uh, using a little bit of force. Let's do bang it like twice, and that should be gone. Yes, exactly. So here now we're gonna take the water tube, open it up. Yeah, it might be a little. It's a little hard. Um, and then uh, so we're gonna draw up the 22 microliters. So go down. So if you're feeling this. Um, so go down like that and feel a little bit of resistance. Yeah. If you push again, that's how you uh, eject it. Okay. So for now, you just want to go down to the first step, just like this. So we're going to go down to the first step, stick the tip into the water, and then pull up. So that should be 22 microliters of water. And then we're going to go into the first tube, yep. and then press all the way down. That should release all the water into that tube. All right, and then we're just going to repeat that for the second tube. Put in the second one? Yep. Exactly. And then when you're done with that, we're going to get rid of this tip because we're done with water. So if you go over your waste container, Put over and then see that there's this part right here um, on this side. Yep. You're just going to press that down and it should eject. Exactly. It's kind of a satisfying feeling yeah. actually. So we're done with water. Next, um, we're going to add, we're going to use the um, uh, use the smaller pipetter to add the primers. Again, this part is a little bit more difficult to, to actually be able to see what you're doing because it's really small volume. So, Again, we'll just go slowly, but 
get the feel of the pipe pad a little bit better now. Yeah. So grab, yep, grab the pink one and dial this down so that it says 1.0. Uh, point zero. So grab the uh, the red uh, tip. I'm gonna do the same thing as we did the other one. We just put on put one onto it. We're gonna reach in here and uh, grab. I think we'll start with the 27 act uh, primer. So open that up. Yeah, I have to shut them tight just so there's nothing, uh, yeah. nothing evaporates. Um, so can you see the, the really small yes. amount at the bottom? All right. So we're going to take our pipetter and do what we did before. Go in a little bit. So you can hold it down a little bit. And then go down into the liquid and then draw up the one microliter. And you should be able to see a bit in the tip of the pipette. It's very hard so to small. see. Yeah. yeah exactly. Kind of an act of faith. So I just put this back in the rack for the moment and grab the first little piece. Hold that up and you're gonna want to slowly put the tip into the liquid and then eject all the liquid. So am I pushing down on this? Yep, you're gonna push down all the way when you when you get the tip into the liquid. Okay. Very good. So we're going to get rid of that tip. We're going to get another tip and repeat that for the second tube. So I got the 27F primer again. Go in. Drop one by the Wait, I feel like I got too much. You might have gone to the second. Um, Should I put it back in? Or is that change that? your tip. Just yeah, ditch yeah. it. You put a new tip it. on. Okay. We've got extra. Yeah, yeah grab another one. Yeah, and so when you're drawing up, just make sure okay. you only go to the first stop. You don't yeah. go down when you're drawing up. It's, sometimes, it's like hard to feel it for it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I completely agree. It, 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 after a while, you, you get the feel for it better, but it takes yeah. a while. Okay. Okay. And then into the second one? The second two, yep. And that's the full eject one. Yep, yeah, exactly. Right, 
So now in each tube we have water and then the two different sets of primers. It can it can get stuck on the wall and not really look much different. Yeah, you, I, I think I don't think there should be an issue there. Okay. It looked it looked like you were doing everything correctly, Caitlin. Okay. And there's such tiny volumes, one microliter, that it's easy for it to just get stuck on the plastic on the side. Yeah. And it's not really an issue in PCR because when you run it through the thermal cycle it's going to kind of reflux through the tube because you make it so hot in there regularly and everything will end up getting mixed as a result. Okay. But it's good that it's good to, to, to pay attention to it. All right, so we're going to stick now still with this, uh, the little one, the small by header. And we're going to do, in each tube, we're going to do one microliter of the DNA, which is here at room temperature. But we're going to switch to in between. So put on the one, uh, the, uh, the tip for the one leg of Then we're gonna go into the DNA tube. Draw off that one leg of litter. And then put it into tube number one. And that's your template that you just added. Later this semester, you'll do an extraction protocol, so you'll, you'll know how you got that template, okay? Then we're going to grab another tip. We're going to keep that for tube number two. Before I before we put them into the thermo cycle, I always just inspect them to make sure there's nothing on the side. And if you do have any drops, that's fine. And if so, if you did, which you don't, but you can always just kind of tap that, and that that should force them to go down. All right, so we're gonna put them in the thermo cycler now. 
Once the PCR reactions are created or set up, you run them in the PCR machine, which is what Caitlin's going to do next. Yep, you can load them anywhere in the PCR machine in the little, um, it's a heat block, that thing. So that little block that's holding your tubes is engineered so it's an efficient way to change temperature really quickly. And when you're done, that lid closes and it has a little rolly cap on it that seals it. You'll, right, Tim? Yeah. So you'll have to, see that like little spinner? Yeah, you'll have to just, just gently though, Caitlin, don't crank it. A little goes a long way there. Yep. And then um, should we just start the run, right? Can you see? And then just watch it for a minute. It should go up to 95, is it? And now those samples will run for a couple of hours. And once they're completed, then in order to determine if the PCR reaction worked, you have to do, or we often do, gel electrophoresis, which is next.